This game didn't have anything in particular that I wanted to show off or particularly talk about. But it marked a pretty good milestone, which we'll see at the very end, which I'm uh, pretty proud of or, you know, pretty excited about. Uh, so I'm playing ranked. Uh, this is a part of the same like five hour rank session that I did. I really do not play ranked very much, but this is the pro this was the very last game of that session. And it was a pretty tough one. I was going up against a a rivaling hybrid Dagon that was built uh, built similarly to my own, and we kind of played out the same moves. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see these uh, these mirror matchups because it kind of it feels a lot like chess to me. Because you both start off like the same moves and you kind of mirror each other for a little bit. And then you like branch out into your own paths uh, to, in the ways that you feel like is, is best or you're most experienced with. So it's pretty interesting in that, in that sense. But in general, of course, uh, I'm playing... I'm just trying to uh, basically match his own temp, the tempo he's putting out. It's going to be a touch difficult since I don't have my own Woodland Spirit or else I would have played it. Uh, because it's generally what you want to do in these mirror matchups, especially for going second. You just want to match your opponent's tempo as close as possible. And then once you find an opportunity to branch off and uh, deliberately d uh, deviate from their tempo... Uh, you need to have a very precise game plan for doing so. You don't want to do it just like just for whatever sake. Like for example, playing something like an Ekinmara uh, at a bad time can be really bad because Ekinmara is usually only about six uh, six strength advantage or six strength yeah six strength advantage I guess. Um, like he just played right. I actually didn't even remember him playing that, but it's, it's a pretty good point that he played it there because it allowed me to catch up. If he had played a more high tempo play, he would have been able to threaten, uh, forcing me to, um, pass or try and go two cards down to catch up to him. I think what he was thinking is that if he, if he plays, uh, the Ekmar here, it's almost equivalent to a Siri. It's kind of like. Yeah, I played a bit of a low tempo play, but if you try and catch up to me, I was and like I, I I lose the round or whatever. I still have something that carries over to the next round that I can just uh that can help me on a dry pass or whatever. It, it's an interesting strategy. I think it, it's much more effective with the Siri. Uh, one because you can pull out Roach. Two because actually I keep thinking about Siri as it used to be. Siri these days is not very good. Hmm. Siri gives you a card back, which is better than just strength. It's much more of an effective threat. Also, this can be... I was going to say, but... Oh, but that Kamara can be hit with things like... uh, You know, a lock card or whatever. But... So... So can Siri... Never mind. That was kind of an offshoot. Uh, I keep like, man, I wish Siri go back to her former glory. It's really sad that the way she is right now. It's kind of like it goes. It kind of goes back to that discussion that I had in the unplayable uh, elder video about how I wish there was like a a very slight return of the old way, uh, the old gold mechanic of like just you know immune to most effects and immune to damage and. Uh, locking effects unless you had specifically um, shackles the bronze spell card and it would be you know immune to silver locks and ratavid and things like that it's too bad i feel like only like a very select few cards like should have that like siri uh, in particular and maybe like i don't know there was a thread the other day about where rethas or whatever was saying how uh, they don't really see an issue with the way those cards are playing right now, which I get. It's probably fine, but still, it, it's kind of sad because Siri was definitely one of my favorite cards in the close. But oh yeah, I made a stupid mistake here. So even though I'm like sitting at like three thousand nine hundred and like ninety seven MMR right here, uh, you know, three points away from rank nineteen, <laughs> I was looking at my other screen and I just kind of like haphazardly. Uh, played my card to my hand. I meant to grab an Ekamar so I could have some strength going into the next round so I can match his a little bit more. Um, but I just stupidly just play the Rand. I don't even play the Rand so he can eat something. I played on the very right side. 
it was really stupid. And I'm like, oh, man, I made a stupid mistake. And I've done that quite a lot, actually. It's really, really stupid. This is like one of the very bare minimum mechanics you need to be able to play well. And I keep messing it up because I'm like, I'm distracted. I don't, thankfully, I don't like lose the round. I mean, I don't need to play another card because of it or lose the round or whatever. That would have been catastrophic. But not being able to play my Akimari there definitely hurt. And just as a minor point, I was all, I was also not able to get off an extra consume, which is uh, effectively like three points that I'm not getting out of my Neckers. So really dumb. I really shouldn't be paying attention. The, like it's not it's very it's not at all an exaggeration to say that, that totally could have lost me the game. Spoiler: I win this one. But like small mistakes like that, and like especially in mirror matchups, if you make just a small mistake, that can butterfly effect and ripple across all the rounds to make you lose by just a little bit because you know how many times go back and watch my videos and look at how many or notice how many how many times i've won a, uh, a round three by like under five points right every point matters and i like being able like making a mistake like that it's just it's like unacceptable especially when i'm playing ranked or something like that and casual it doesn't matter as much because i'm more worried about overall arcing uh, like concept and all that when i'm trying to play ranked i really should be paying more attention and not you know making mistakes like that because it's like it's not even like a mistake that you can like oh i need to fix that mistake it's just like you know it should never be a problem in the first place kind of idea So this is a good opportunity to use Monster's Nest to use a Drowner instead of usually playing the uh, my usual. I usually play uh, Rackness Behemoth so I can get a lot of those consumed synergies off. Uh, even if you hit only like one or two hatchlings, it's still really good. It's as if you played a 14 strength bronze. That's nice. And then with additional... Uh, room for more hatchlings to come out which even just leads to even more consumes i definitely had a game where the hatchlings have uh made it uh, it was a mill game where hatchlings basically won me the game because not only were was i getting three strength per but i was also getting the opportunity for the random warriors to consume more which made my neckers that much more powerful so i'm just trying to bleed them out as much as possible here uh, I'm not I'm not looking for anything in particular besides looking for like a one enigma target and two um just setting up so that whenever I go into the next round I have a necker that comes out and then I can use my Kamara to eat the necker so that my last necker comes out and getting all the points uh therein. It's a pretty common I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but it's a relatively common uh tactic that I use on this deck. I mean, I'm not saying I invented or anything, but at least this is what I tend to use. Is I try and bleed out rounds one and two as much as possible, and then save three Neckers or two Neckers and one consume unit, like a Ran Warrior Ekimara for the round three, and I can just, just explode with tempo. And as I've mentioned before, we got all the way down to our last cards. It doesn't matter how much they win the round by, I make sure to pass before. I end up overplaying, and then he just passes on me because my last card won't pass him in strength. Granted, he has a very strong uh, playing field right here, but I pulled him to Caretaker, probably one of my most powerful cards in my deck for round three. It's probably my single most powerful card in round three. Plays Ekamara, that's totally fine. I have my own. His neck Ekamara is a lot more stronger than mine, which is kind of sad. In here, I'm just being very careful not to make any mistakes. I'm playing the right cards, and the cards that I know is going to have me pass the strength total, because it's very close. I win by, like, what, two points? Yeah, so close. If I was just two points off, uh, we would have tied, and I may not have uh, gone up to, as we'll see, rank 19. I know in the grand scheme of things, it's not all that you know unique getting up to rank 19 at this point in time, uh, but as someone who plays ranked, like, once a week for a couple hours uh, i got up here relatively seamlessly which is kind of nice it kind of just like reinforces the fact it kind of reminds me of league of legends almost where if you're a good player and you know i'm gonna 
I'm going to embellish myself a little bit here. If you're a good player, then you can run, you can climb relatively quickly. As opposed to something like Hearthstone, which is much, much more down to, uh, you know, just RNG and whatever bullshit. You know, the, there's a famous like uh, story about Life Coach, right? Is that he would he spent a very long time practicing, and he still only like barely rose his win rate to like fifty three percent or something stupid like that. Uh, and then you know, you come to Gwent, and I played one hundred twenty games, and I had like a sixty percent win rate almost. And I was playing things like uh, mostly Dagon Consume, I believe. I don't have any I don't have any trackers up, but I'm sure my Dagon Consume win rate was probably around 70, 75, like at the most. And then I played some Impetuous Pandas armor a little bit, some John Calvate Spies, and that's about it. My John Calvate Spies is probably like 40%, but I didn't play very much of it. So I got up there, 4,023, rank 6,000. I'm probably not going to play ranked very much anymore. I really do not like playing ranked but i think this is good a good enough uh a good enough rank for me to just stop stop with it <laughs> until maybe i don't know i may come back and play some more dacon monsters it really depends i really need to have a deck that i like that I, if i i really need a deck that i like to continue playing ranked otherwise it's too boring of an experience like because I, I cannot play uh like if you saw my deck list over here Yeah, like I cannot play Panda Mulligan. I can't play the Nanosis card in ranked because those decks will just get annihilated because they're they're not necessarily bad decks. They're just they cannot match the power of Consume and Armor, and uh, you know some other the other decks like um, Buffing Skoatau is pretty difficult to beat. Or Frost, Frost, <clears throat> excuse me, Frost Aaron. And then uh, my Spy deck needs a little bit of a. Rework. I'll probably uh, over the course of this cor over the course of this week. I'll probably try and fix up Mulligan a little bit, so it's a little bit better. I don't even know what to do with this card. It it feels like kind of straightforward and interesting, but man, does it just like it feels so clunky? And I'm not saying because like the deck isn't built well, but because like the mechanics therein are so weird. And like so reliant on like a very specific strategy. It's very it's very strange. It's very unlike any of the other discard decks that I've played. Because you're not necessarily trying to get discard synergy, you're trying to get revive synergy, which is like it's it's a weird concept. It, it, it's nice to play in casual, but you absolutely cannot take this into rank. You'll get just annihilated. At least from what I've seen so far of this deck. Maybe there's a discard deck out there that'll do better, but I don't know. And my spy deck is uh it's not using the the, the disruption card that damages to every time my spy comes up, and I probably need to put two of those in, two to three of those in, and take out something else. I don't even know what to take out though. Something to think about. Over this next week, I'll definitely have more John Calvate. Get back to the decks I like playing in casual. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I embellished enough. I not very it's thinly veiled, humble bragging. Thanks for watching. Even though there's not really all that much to brag about. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm roughly like what Diamond and like Lee Legends equivalent, which is fine, but just I'm kind of proud of it. That's it. Thanks for watching.